All right, well, the banking crisis, tarp, towel, the situation seems incredibly complex. But your next guest says the problem is actually quite simple. The banks can sell all these billions in bad assets that are on their books, but at prices that they believe are too low. Meantime, the private market buyers don't want to step in because they're waiting for prices to drop even more. It's kind of like the housing market, right? So how do we bring buyers and sellers together? David Castillo, Further Lane Securities, is working on a plan. He's actually talked to the FDIC to try to improve the balance sheets for these distressed banks. And David joins us now with more. Uh, before we get into your plan, David, I want to ask you to follow up on what Liz's story was talking about. Do you believe that, that this is an express guarantee, this sort of semi-language that the government is putting out? What, what do you believe the U.S. stands with regards to these big banks like Citi? I think the U.S. right now is still trying to figure out where they stand on this. At this I, point, I completely agree. Yeah, I think at this point in time, as Liz reported, um, there's a stress test analysis that's going to go on. That test right now is not transparent. We don't know what that stress test is. We don't know what they're testing. We won't know the results, right? Right. There, there's been uh, previous tests in the past relative to financial institutions and their regulatory reporting and how they are um, holding different assets on their balance sheet as well as their regulatory reserves um, that they have. Um, until the market understands what these stress tests are, there's going to be continued consternation in the markets. I think at this point in time, the federal government is going to do everything possible to put the markets at ease that they are not for nationalization, that they are for a free market system, and they'd like to look for any way to do that. That's more of a political response than an economic one, perhaps. Well, I think at this point it is, but until a real plan that has substantive um, thoughts that are easy not for the market. Not just statements about... Yeah, right. we stand firmly behind. Well, well, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, Detail like, well, that. Well, something real, like something that the market can see as a transparent path by which we can see an end to this crisis where we can put some sort of floor underneath these quote unquote toxic assets yep. and understand how we can move past this uh, pricing variability that comes with and, the assets. And, that and that's the, the plan you're working on. And I hope my analogy wasn't too simplistic, but it is complex, you know, and it's like the housing market, right? I mean, is this accurate? I mean, anybody can sell their house today. But they may not sell the house for what they want or what they think it might be worth. I mean, if I put my house up for sale for five bucks, I guarantee you it's, it's going to sell. I don't want to do that. And so people are waiting, right? Buyers don't want to buy because they think prices are going to come down. Sellers don't want to sell because they can only get these lowball prices. That's what's happening on the bank's balance sheets right now. You're working on a plan that would, what, create almost a de facto floor for prices or establish yeah. transparency? Well, the way we look at it is, is that... A market is a function of the participants that are in it. That's right. And right now, the participants in the market are very far apart. They both have to have realistic expectations. Well, at this point, neither have realistic expectations, which is why the market is so wide. What we suggest and what we are proposing is a way to put a floor value that is some sort of future or economic value on the underlying assets and allow these financial institutions to stabilize themselves with some sort of, um, let's just say, a different sort of guarantee than what's been talked about in the uh, how in so the what what how would you it that pricing is the problem well how do we establish pricing of these bad assets well the pricing of these assets right now is a function of what the market sees them to be now and we know the market right now is being predatory and opportunistic I as a trader right now am being predatory and opportunistic when I'm trying to bid assets all right, the market's doing the same thing. This is America, it's about trying to create as much profit as possible. What this plan attempts to do is, is to put some sort of floor value on their underlying assets on these institutions, which are loans, which are mortgage-backed securities. Which do you are remove them securities. from the bank's balance sheets? In a sense, they stay on the bank balance sheets, but then they move into a new sort of trust vehicle, which will allow them to have a floor value on the underlying assets and look towards the final maturity date of most of these assets. Okay, so who owns that trust? At the end of the day, the bank would still own those, but it would be a function of what the capital reserve ratios would be. Remember, banks have to retain X That's amount right. of capital the for, for the different sorts of assets on their books. As the, um, as the uh, erosion in value of these assets occur, or the decline in the ratings of these assets occur, or the perceived market value in these assets occur, the capital that they need continues to increase, therefore sucking away the regulatory capital. But, but isn't that something like what Citi is trying to do by breaking into two companies? you got the holding company over here and sort of the bad bank over there. You know, the, the, the bad bank thought process is a bad idea. It didn't work before. It will not work now because all you're doing is creating another institution that still has assets on it that will eventually be given away and be hurting the institution. 
What our plan does and what we think it does is allow the institution to continue to manage the assets which they already know and know best. Because remember, either they bought them originally, they originated the assets, and, and also not this is their them. job. This is not the government's job. Whatever people think of Wall Street, there are a lot of smart women and women and men analysts who can do the job of analyzing these assets better than some government bureaucrat. Well, exactly. I mean, I think the last thing you want is you don't want an amateur going in and trying to manage the job of a professional once the professional has gotten in trouble. What you'd like to do is work with those professionals to see how best they maximize the value there. And right now what the professionals need is they need time and they need protection from the markets. We think that this particular plan takes that protection and gives it and to And quickly, them. have you talked to the FDIC? Where do you stand with this? Well, I think what we try to do is, is um, you know, as far as those negotiations and what's been discussed and, and speaking Speaking with them um, to right keep now, that's wraps. yeah. Right now, I think it's proprietary, and I think it would be appropriate at this point in time for any regulatory agency to do their necessary work. But I would suggest to you that it is um, the right time to be discussing this sort of plan because we favor a plan right now that does not cost the American taxpayers money. We don't believe that the American taxpayer should have to bail out these institutions. Yeah. We believe these institutions, if given the right plan, can bail themselves out and create a revenue well, positive, I... re, listen to this, this is very important, a revenue positive plan for the federal government where the banks pay to bail themselves out. Well, I tell you this much, the taxpayer would like it for two reasons. Number one, wouldn't cost the money. Number two, you actually have a plan. We have a plan. We're ready to discuss it. <laughs> David Castillo, Further Lane Securities, when you want to give more details, you're always welcome back. You'll be the first guy who knows. Thank, I appreciate that, David. Thank you very much. All right, well, coming up, one year ago, Charlotte, North Carolina, had one of the strongest housing markets in the country. Well, how things have changed in just a year, the once powerful banking sector taking a hit down south as well. We'll give you an update on the state of Charlotte ahead. What do Europeans think about the U.S. economic crisis and the president's plan to fix it? Our special guest is Scotland's first minister. He's basically the head of their cabinet in Scotland and President Obama.